Hello everyone, this is Jason Levine, Worldwide Product Evangelist for Adobe. And in this brief video, I'm going to show you and discuss um, some of the spectral editing capabilities of Adobe Audition for the Mac. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at a mono base file. So this is the same base file that was used in the multi-tracking session. And I noticed that there was some uh, a little bit of hum and a little bit of background noise that I wanted to remove. This was really bothering me when I was listening to it in headphones. Now you probably won't be able to hear it, um, over this video, but you'll be able to see it. And that's the key, is that the spectral view allows you to see frequency over time. So you can access it in a number of different ways. You can click on the Show Spectral Frequency Display button here, or you can simply grab this little divider and pull it up like this. And you can even keep the waveform and the spectral view together so that you can see both at the same time. That's a really nice way to work. I typically like to keep the spectral full view just to make it easier for me. That's entirely up to you. Now, before I do anything, before I do any kind of editing, I rely on amplitude statistics. This is a panel, this is something that we had in the previous version of Audition, but it was modal, meaning that you had to enter it and you could only view it um, one file at a time and you had to basically leave the editing environment. But now this is a non-modal dockable dialog that will allow you to basically see the amplitude statistics for any file that you're working on. So you can simply click on scan and this is going to tell us all the attributes of the file. Now, for this file, we don't have any clipping. You can see our peak amplitude is good. It's minus 6 dB. No clipped samples. RMS looks good. No DC offset. We can actually see the recorded bit depth here. So, very simple, very easy, nothing to worry about. But this is just something that you should use because this is going to allow you to prep your files more properly for wherever they're going, right? So if you have clipped samples, maybe, but you can't hear them, but perhaps you see the red light flickering and so on and so forth. This is where you'll be able to find all of that out. So right away when we take a look at this, we can see that we have all of these horizontal lines running through this base file. So if I play this back for you. Now again, over the internet here, you're not going to hear this little bass rumble. And it's not that bad. And why is that? How do I know it's not that bad? Well, again, we're seeing frequency over time. Frequency on our y-axis here time along the X, and color equals amplitude. So the closer the color is to yellow, in this case, almost a yellowy orange, the louder the amplitude at that particular frequency. And you can see that most of the amplitude is somewhere between zero and two and a half kilohertz. The closer the color is to black, the quieter the amplitude at that particular frequency. And you can see that even though I captured this full fidelity on a really nice condenser mic, there's just not a lot of information captured through a bass amp above around 6K. It's just not there. So again, and this is me playing with fingers, no less, not even a pick. So there's just, there's little hints of bits up here and there and around there, but not a lot of information captured. So we don't want to ruin, we don't want to touch any of this area. There's nothing there. We want to focus on the areas here. And because these little horizontal lines are sort of purple in color, reddish purple, that tells us that it's not very high amplitude but it's there, and I just don't want that noise there at all. There's no reason to have it there, because when we start compressing and processing this file, then that could cause problems further on down the line. So what we want to do to be able to remove that noise without touching any areas where the noise doesn't exist, we want to make a frequency-specific selection. Now you'll notice up at the top here that we have a whole series of tools. We've got a time selection tool. This would be used if you want to select everything. We don't want to use that. You've got the familiar Photoshop marquee, the familiar lasso, the paintbrush selection tool, and the spot healing brush. For our purposes here, we're going to use the marquee selection tool and only select the areas of noise that we can see. And in this case, I'm going to choose something that looks fairly uniform that's in this range right here. Now, before we do that, I just want to point something out. When you're making spectral selections, you have the ability to hear the selection that you're making. Now again, you're not going to be able to hear this, but let's say we just wanted to hear these frequencies here of the bass. I can make this selection, and when I play that, can you hear that sort of really low muffled bass sound? Yeah, because we're only hearing zero to around 700 hertz. Now that's actually an option that you can enable. If you go up to Preferences, Spectral Display, you'll see a checkbox here Play only selected frequencies when a spectral selection exists. Again, this is really useful if you're trying to remove individual sounds or if you're just trying to audition exactly what it is that you're removing, not necessarily only relying on your eyes. 
For us, though, we know that this is the area that we want. And again, you typically want to find an area that's fairly uniform, right? And we can see here that this all looks very similar. So I can right click on this selection and choose Capture Noise Print. And when I do that, it's going to tell me that it's going to use this as a noise profile. And I can say, Don't show this again, and click OK. It captures the profile. And now I'm going to go into Effects, Noise Reduction, Noise Reduction Process. And here I can begin setting my parameters. First thing I want to do is select the entire file. Now, there's a lot of things that we can discuss in here. We don't have enough time to discuss everything. But basically, you've got two kinds of noise reduction. You have subtractive, which is what we're going to use now. And then you have something called spectral decay noise reduction. Now, by default, this setting here is going to be set to around 65%. Unlike basically subtracting noise, spectral decay is going to very carefully decay the noise over time, or basically attenuate it, so that you no longer hear it, and then over time decay it based on the amplitude of the program material. Effectively, this is great for things like hiss, and if you have some kind of background ambience that you don't want to subtract, because sometimes that can leave you with artifacts. So by spectrally decaying it, it's going to attenuate it so that you no longer perceive it as being there, the noise is actually still there, it's just attenuated, and then it decays over time, again, just to give you a smoother, less artifacted sound. For removing buzzes and hums, you don't want to attenuate and smooth it out, you just want to subtract. Again, not necessarily 100% of the time, but most of the time. So what I'm going to do is, after I select the entire file, I'm going to set my noise reduction literally to 99%, set my spectral decay to zero, I'll leave all of the others at the defaults, click apply and now when I take a look at this you can see that the lines are gone and again audibly to you here let's undo that you can see it's all back now let's play it let's just we'll wind this back a little bit more okay nice bright clean let's redo the noise reduction play it again the sound is the same we haven't removed any of the brightness or the clarity or the presence of the bass. We've just removed all of that annoying noise. And you can see it now. It's all black. It's black. It's all gone. All of those lines of noise are gone. Simple. Now, we've also got a little something up here, but this is basically invisible. We can't even see that. That's in the 4 to 5K range. That's a little bit of that amp ambience. And that's kind of nice. You want that in there. That gives you that air. So we don't want to touch that. If you did, though, this might be an area where we use a little spectral decay so that we don't simply subtract it, we just attenuate it. Very cool. So now that we've done that, now we can begin, again, mixing this file. We won't have any of that buzz or hum in there. Now, there's other times where you actually, as I mentioned, want to use some spectral decay. So if we take a look at this voiceover that I have, this is actually a voiceover that was introducing Audition on the Mac in my original videos. You can see here that we've got lots of noise, and we've also got some hum. If I zoom in down here, you can also zoom in along your y-axis here. You can see all kinds of stuff going on there. So again, we've got some room hum. We've got lots of annoying room tone that we don't need. And once again, there's not a lot of stuff in the upper frequencies here, not a lot of noise. We could probably attenuate some of that, but we've got options. So in this case, what I might do is make a selection like this. Okay, take a listen to it. Okay, and you can hear that's just that mid-rangey noise. Again, this is probably something we don't want. We can even make it a little bit higher. Right-click, capture a noise print go into noise reduction, and now this is where we might use a little bit of spectral decay. Again, the reason behind this, it's just going to smooth out the artifacts. Now, we don't want to use 100%. I might take this down to around 80. The nice thing here is that we can actually audition, haha, we can actually audition the preview of this, and we can enable this on and off to hear what it's doing. So let's select the entire file, let's play it, and we'll start with it off, and then I'll turn it on. Well, hello, my friends. Jason Levine here, Worldwide Product Evangelist for Adobe. And what can I say? It's been years, years and years that I've waited, waited for this moment, the moment. So you can see how we're actually affecting and very nicely attenuating that stuff. You'll also notice that I used about 3%. I never go really beyond about 10%. That's all you're going to need to just attenuate some of that background noise. So I can click Apply like this. And now, once again, what do we see? all of that noise that we didn't want only in those frequency areas remember there's some stuff up here this is room tone this is room ambience i like the sound of that 
I don't need to take it out. If I start removing too much of that, that's going to give me artifacts. Now again, this is completely seasoned to taste. This is, you have to listen. The idea is that we're using our eyes to identify it, and then we can remove what we don't want. And if we play this now, is coming to the Mac. Okay, and again, if I wanted to, I could simply take this high-end noise, make another selection, and attenuate that slightly. It's giving me a little bit of a hiss right now, so I might want to do that. Now, one of the other things that you can do with the spectral lasso is that you can apply effects to specific selections. So let's say that I wanted to affect a specific frequency range. That Adobe Audition, right here, where I say Adobe Audition, but I don't want it to apply to every frequency only to the mid-range frequency. So I'm now zooming in with my plus and minus keys. I'm going to make a selection like this. Again, I can play this back. Let's move this down a little bit. And you can see I can adjust the range here. I didn't realize where we were right there. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and let's adjust the range. Adobe Audition, Adobe Audition, Adobe Audition, Adobe Audition, Adobe Audition, Adobe Audition. You can see I can also adjust my, my lasso selection simply by clicking on the arrows here. And right now, basically what I'm doing is I'm affecting roughly the range between 1K and 4K, which is giving me that telephone-like sound. So let's say that I want to add some delay or some decay just to those frequencies, but not the high frequencies. I can do that. I can go up to Effects, Delay and Echo, Analog Delay. I can preview this. and it only applies the delay to those specific frequency ranges. And you can see I left a little bit of room here at the end so that we have a nice decay. Click Apply, like that. Now when I play this back, I tell you that Adobe, Adobe Audition, Audition is coming to the Mac. All right, kind of cool, right? So this allows you to, again, apply effects and filters to specific frequency ranges. So not only removing things with these tools, but also adding. So you can add effects and actually edit in the spectral view and apply things to specific frequency ranges. Now again, one of the last things that we might want to do is actually use something like our spectral paintbrush to remove individual sounds. And in the past, I've shown this with cell phones, with dogs barking, all kinds of things. Here's a little stinger that I did a while ago. And uh, this was kind of mimicking a, a popular radio station. And towards the end here, I just had a little, I, I hit the mic. There was some kind of an annoying sound. You can see it right there. So let's take a listen. Where rock lives. And it's almost inaudible, at least probably over your speakers now. But I needed this decay. I didn't, I didn't, I needed this room tone in there. I didn't want to get rid of it. So I simply wanted to, whoa, zooming all over. I simply wanted to just remove that sound but keep everything else intact. That's the idea. You know, you're not necessarily always removing huge pieces of audio. Sometimes it's little small pieces like this. So again, I just want to remove that one sound without affecting everything else. Well, there's a fantastically easy way to do it. You can go up to Favorites and you can choose Auto Heal. And just like Photoshop, this is actually performing a healing brush right on your audio right there. Okay, play it back. There's no difference, perfect sound, but that little, uh, that little annoying blip is gone. Now you could in fact also use the spot healing brush to do that as well. And you can see that you've got the ability here to adjust the size of the brush. I can simply paint on it like this, and it heals it out that way. So again, lots of cool ways to use familiar tools and techniques that you know from Photoshop right inside the spectral frequency display and audition on the Mac.